Dr. Todd Barr joining us, um, renowned pathologist. Dr. Barr, how can you tell how long someone has been dead? So there's uh, several ways of, of uh, checking the time of death. And what we use, we rely on rigor mortis, which is the stiffening of the muscles that occurs uh, after death. That usually sets in between six to eight hours in the postmortem interval, uh, becomes very firm for about 24 to 36 hours, and then starts to uh, uh, go away after after that time. So it breaks down. So there's sort of like in the in the initial interim after death, the body is still loose and flaccid, and then the muscles start to tighten up after about six to eight hours and go into full rigor mortis for about 24 hours, and then it wanes at the other end. Um, the other thing is lividity, which is the uh, pooling of the blood in the postmortem setting. Once someone passes, the blood starts to leak out of the blood vessels and settles towards gravity. So if they're lying on their back, you'll get this sort of discoloration that occurs in the skin, um, in the lower part part of the body that's closest to where gravity would be uh, pulling, in, in the case if they're on their back, would be, you know, on their backside, except where there's pressure. And lividity um, becomes sort of pink and purple. Um, and if you can push on it and it blanches out, that's a relatively new uh, uh, time of death, I would say within the first six hours. After about six hours, that lividity fixes itself and if you were to roll somebody over, uh, that that lividity would not move. If it was, um, if somebody was moved in the early stages of death, um, that lividity would then shift to the new position. So if somebody had been dead for say six to eight hours in one position and then rolled, that lividity would not change. It would be fixed. So that's that's one of the things that when we go to crime scenes. Um, if you see somebody that's on their face, like face down, but the lividity is on the back side of the body, we know that that body's been moved. So th those are, are, are several of the, the ways that we can determine time of death and how long a body has been dead, um, along with uh, temperature. Um, there's a called alga mortis, which is the temperature of the body, uh, depending on the environment that they're in, that temperature uh, will the temperature of the body will decrease by a certain amount per hour, um, depending on the temperature of the environment that they're in. Will the victim's body stabilize at the ambient temperature? Yes. Yes, it will. And back to rigor, you stated that, uh, I was speaking with Dr. Todd Barr. Everybody on the panel jump in if you've got a question for him. Dr. Barr, you stated that rigor the stiffening of the limbs starts to set in, did you say after about six hours? Yeah, it's generally about six to eight hours. I mean, there are, there are definitely um, environmental uh, uh, settings that, that change that. If someone's in a very cold environment or someone's in a very warm environment, um, it can accelerate or deaccelerate the, the, um, the stiffening of the muscles and the, the lividity. But if someone is in, say, a regular setting, you know, 70, 75 degree room, um, they're not in a, um, you know, overly hot environment. Um, the process goes, you know, pretty much in a standard format. Um, I want to go back to rigor. It sets in between six and eight hours. And then did you say it, it, the victim will remain in rigor or the body stiff until about 24 hours and then the body loosens up? Yeah. So um, after about 24 hours, the, uh, the body start, you know, with, with the decomposition process, um, the, the bonds that hold that rigor together start to break. And so the rigor loosens what bond? up. What bond? What bond holds it together? Yeah. So, so what happens is there, there are bonds that, um, the muscle, the cells of the muscles make, and and the energy that it takes to create those bonds breaks down over time. It's just like anything else. It just uh, as as time goes on, things just start to break down. So rigor occurs and is is 
pretty well in its uh, at, at the height within about eight to twenty four hours, mm-hmm. and then after that, just the normal process. Those bonds just start to to wear off and break out. Uh, so the the muscles loosen up again. Now I, I I realize I'm asking a lot of questions about how a body behaves and how you can time um, a time of death because it's very critical in this case, very critical sure. indeed. I wanted to ask you about the alga mortis uh, translation, the temperature of the body. You state that you can tell if the body is reached. The ambient temperature in the room question so often people see on TV and in movies that the victim's temperature is actually taken like in the armpit or some other um, way or some other part of the body is that real does that really happen um in my experience, we did not rely heavily on the alga mortis, the, mm-hmm. the temperature. Uh, a lot of times what what people will do um, in the old days, I, I, I didn't see this in my career, but they would make an incision and stick the, the uh, thermometer into the liver tissue. So to get like a core temperature. Okay, right. I'm just absorbing what you just said. In the old days... They would make an incision in the body and place the thermometer into the liver to determine what? Body temp? The, the core temperature, yes. Uh, a lot of times um, in, in the, the current, the way we do it now, most people either put it under the armpit or they, they'll take a re- rectal temperature. Uh, what, what they want to do is get as close to the core temperature, which is the internal temperature. So... You know, you can't really do like an oral temperature from the mouth because it's too far away from the core. Armpits are kind of too far away from the and core. And why Rectal do you need the core temp of the body? Because that will that will tell you where the actual temperature of the body is at. You know, when you go out and you are out in the snow, say mm-hmm. in the winter time, your fingers get really cold. Um, so you can't really rely on the temperature of the extremities. You need you need the temperature of the internal temperature of the core. Okay, I know you probably don't realize this, Dr. Todd Barr, because this is your everyday vernacular, but we think you're pretty brilliant. Um, That was an incredible explanation. The reason this is so important is I need to figure out time of death. Now, there are other things. Let me go to Nicole DeBoard, Hotchglobe, veteran trial lawyer, former prosecutor. Of course, we're going to look at extrinsic evidence to determine time of death. Did she make a phone call and speak to somebody at 7.15 and then they call back at 7.30 and she didn't answer the phone? My point is I'm clearing the mother. That's where I'm going with this. Did the mother have That's anything exactly. to do with this? Absolutely not. That's at right. all. But I don't want some a-hole defendant trying to push the blame on mom. I'm telling you, if I thought even a tiny bit the mother had anything to do with this, I'd be on her like a cheap suit, but I don't. I believe her. I believe everything that she has said. I've listened very carefully. I've watched her demeanor, and I don't need to believe her because her story is completely accurate. There is video cam of her leaving. Her cell phone leaves with her at the time that she leaves. There are communications that the girl had with other people after mom leaves, we think. But that's why I'm nailing down the time of death, and I will use any and all means to do that, uh, Nicole DeBoard Hotchglobe. I mean, you have to. You've got to get the um, alga mortis, the temperature, the rigor. You've got to look at the liver mortis, the, how the blood has settled. You have to look at extrinsic evidence like her cell phone, her uh, social media, the mother's cell phone, the video surveillance. Is there? Do they have a, a burglar alarm that times when somebody goes in and out of the house? A lot of them do. 